everybody is walking up. Uh, first of all, I will ask you a few questions. Uh, who is deploying in production at least once a month? I hope everybody. No. At least once a week. And at least once a day. Okay. It's the right audience. So, uh, to start, a uh, small word about me, about myself. Uh, I'm Frederic De Wien. I'm CTO and co-founder of the platform Continuous PHP. I'm also technical account manager for the European Commission in, uh, in, in Europe. Yes. Uh, I have 15 years of background as a sysadmin and a PHP consultant, and also I'm PHP certified engineer and evangelist and continuous delivery deployment addict. Uh, I want to accept and to you to accept the apologies of uh, Peter, who originally should be with me to present this talk. Uh, he couldn't make it, so please accept his, ap his apologies. But he helped me a lot to writing these slides. Uh, first of all, a little word about the projects we are talking about. So it's European Commission. Everybody in the room knows about European Commissions? No? No? Uh, it's a government organization. It's a group of uh, all the European governments to, uh, to um, write some, uh, some rules in, for, the, for each country in, in, uh, in Europe. So there are about uh, 50,000 people working in uh, the European Commission. So there are hundreds of websites, many in static HTML, but not all of them. There are hundreds of dynamic websites using uh, a lot of different uh, technologies like PHP, yes, but not, uh, not only PHP, Java. Uh, JavaScript, yes, and there are millions of pages. The total is completely unknown because the, it's so huge. Uh, in fact, every single uh, decision made at European Commission has to be published on the web. So it's why it's so huge. This is the, the main portal of the European Commissions, but there are other portals like Horizon 2020. It's a program for research and innovation with a budget of 80 billion euro of funding available over seven years. So you can find all the information on this website. You can propose your, your, your project. You can see what project is, in, is part of it uh, and so on. You have also the commissioners website. So on this website, you will see all the commissioners, all, all the members of the European commissions, and you can see the, the news about them, uh, what the, what's their agenda, and so on. Also, you have the European Youth Portal for young people looking for jobs or studying in Europe, all the information are, avail are available on this portal. So there are a lot of websites like this, hundreds. And for an audience with approximately 500 million people with on uh, 28 countries, with 24 languages, uh, it's huge. So. To, to develop this, European Commission chosen, have chosen Drupal. Why cho and they, they chose Drupal? It's a, it's a platform, uh, it's a very solid platform. It's, a, it's stable, secured, scalable. I don't have to explain you why to use Drupal, not here, but 
it's uh, it was the choice in the choice was the choice was made uh, by uh, example you have the white toys using Drupal and so on it was the, the best choice best option to the European Commission so they decided in 2012 to create a multi-site multi distribution, distribution for approximately 100 subsites to start. So it's a Drupal 7 distribution, and it's the base uh, framework with the common features available for all the, the subsites. So it's using DrushMake for for the the packaging and for the installation and the deployment. It's using uh, all the best practice, the best practice you can find on Drupal.org. And the development has started in 2012, as I said. So a long way has started just there. So in 2014. The, there were a lot of challenges to to to, to rise. Uh, the team is growing up too fast. So, 100 websites in 2014, 100 more planned, more than 200 developers. It's huge, and all the developers are split across the different countries. They, they are not in the same location. So also you have more than 1,000 content editors. It's also a big uh, challenge with 250 modules. So about performance, it's a pain. So <clears throat> I talked about the distributed teams. In the organization, they have many contractors in many countries. So everybody is working with different operating system. On, uh, some are internal, others are externals. So they are using the company cultures in, instead of the, in the European Commission culture. Uh, some are working on VM, others uh, on their own laptop. Uh, also, the, at the European Commission, everything is behind uh, DMZ, so to access the versioning system from outside is very difficult. And as everybody has a different uh, type of computers, it's really hard also to, to install the application locally because the scripts are completely different in, in, uh, if you are using Windows. Uh, or uh, Mac OS or Linux and so on. So also, they were using outdated practices. They, are, they were using SVN, yes. Uh, a lot of people are still using SVN, but it, it blocked them to, to have a better, a, best, a better agility. And they, they were using bash scripts to, to deploy the application, to, to install the application locally. It's what's very hard to maintain. And they were using internally a shared development server. So they connected through SSH to this server to, to work. And contractors were using their own laptop. And all, of, and all the, this practice also were the, the worst was they were releasing only once every three months. So the, the size of change was really huge. Uh, the, so it's part of the bottlenecks. The bottlenecks they, they encountered uh, were the code review is completely manual, was completely manual. Uh, in fact, every single change made by a contractor or a developer was manually reviewed by a quality assurance mem team member. And the, the, the deployment was completely manual, so it takes a long time. 
and also the risk is very very high when you deploy manually and uh, as the the updates were every three months it was hard also to to wait for the new features to to fix uh, to to have odd fixes and also to test it uh, the the QA team in fact every three months have about one month of testing of the new release it's huge so also they encountered a lot of regressions the so as the, the there is a high rate of code change the the, reg in the regression risk was really big and there were no semantic automat automated tests, systematic uh, uh, automated tests, no uh, coding rules check, no behavior test, nothing. So it was very, really hard to, to check that. Uh, so they decided to optimize their, their processes, their quality assurance processes so the goals was the goals were to reduce bottlenecks by automation by automation to speed up the release cycle and to adopt the new version of the best practices but not only for Drupal for every single website not for every single development project and to use a common build system, not a specific build system per project. Also, to ease the external access to have the same way for every single developer to develop. And, sure, to automate, to automate the testing and the QA processes. To do this, they decided to move to industrialization. It's quite logic, but when you start from nothing, or almost nothing, you have for at first to define the plan, to define the tool set you, you, you will use. So it's what's, what's done. Uh, in a few weeks, we analyzed the, the needs of every single team, of every single project, and we found, we found the, single, the, the common needs and defined the best tools to use for the teams, uh, for, the, for the needs of the, the entire teams, more than 200 developers. So first of all, we decided to move to Git. But not only Git, we decided to move to GitHub. So it's not only the, the, the branching, uh, the, the, in the, the ease of the branching and the merging you, you can find with Git compared to GitHub, uh, to, to SVN, but also we, we have the, the pull request and so on. And all the, the ease of uh, integrating other platform, other systems, other tools in the, uh, with the, the repositories. So we started to use GitFlow2 uh, and to convert all the, the SVN history into Git. And also clean up the, the history because as the, the deployment tools, the deployment was using uh, uh, internal script, the, the, the historic Used, uh, use also proprietary script, and we didn't want to, to put the, this script on GitHub. So all the, the platform code you have is public on GitHub. You can uh, look at it, you can fork it if you want. It's an open source project. So. Also, as everybody were using SVN, we had to train the entire team, team by team. 
So next step was to define the tools to manage the dependency in the, the code. On Drupal 7, yes. Composer not, is not often used in, on Drupal 7, but it was the choice to use Composer not only for the, uh, for the code itself, but all these dependencies, all the tools you are using in a project are dependencies. The testing tools are dependencies, don't, so it's quite logic to use them, to define that in the, your Composer file. It's what it, we, we did. So on the, in, the, um, in the, the project, you can find uh, the Composer file with all the tools needed to, to execute the, uh, the, the test and to automate the, the, the delivery processes. So after that, uh, we decided to use Task Manager. So we used Thing. Why? Because it's a PHP project. It's easy to, to use for PHP developer, and it's easy to extend for a PHP developer because everything is written in PHP. And yes, Drupal is using Drush, but Drush is easily use is easy to integrate in uh, in Thing. You can find uh, on uh, the Thing Drush task project to add the Drush task in uh, in Thing. So you can have the the task like this. You you use Drush make file. You can uh, use all the the command you have on, in Drush into Thing. So additionally, you can add all the, the automation you, you need in Thing. Also, it was important to add uh, the coding style rules. Maybe you, you attended to the, a previous session speaking about uh, coding styles. So we created a custom rule set based on the Drupal rule set, Drupal 7 rule set. And the configuration is generated with thing, and every single push is checked before pushing, uh, actually pushing with, uh, with PHP cost sniffer. So if there, is, uh, if there is something wrong in the, in the code, it's impossible to, to push. Yes, you could, you, you could uh, remove the, the hook if you want, but it's not a good practice. And just after, it's, it's uh, blocked by the, the CI platform. So it was once, uh, one of the first steps to add the, the coding rules. But after that, we decided to add a functional test. To do this, we used BIAT. Why using BIAT and not a simple test or PHP unit? It's simple. It's, uh, it's, uh, the tests are written in almost English, the Gherkin syntax, to define the specs. So it was easy also to integrate the, the product owner in the spec definition and the test definition. It's, uh, or, as it supports the, the web browser, it's very uh, easy to, to test even JavaScript integrated with your application. And it was also the, um, the best way to ease the maintenance of the behavior test. Test like this, it's just for the login page. It's uh, really easy to understand for a product owner, for a non-developer. Non and when the test fails, you exactly know which feature is blocking. Because in the end, what is really important for you is to know which feature is impacted, which feature is ready for the, uh, for the product owner. It's the most important for him. And, uh, and the, uh, just after, 
we decided to have a testing environment, but ephemeral testing environment, not only a, a, the, a single environment. So every single branch can have an environment. To do this, we needed an immutable infrastructure. So using tools like Packer, uh, it's really easy because you can have the you can have a, for any version of your code a version of your image with all the system dependencies you need, and it's completely in there. And there is no vendor locking. Uh, you can use as well uh, AWS, Azure. Uh, VMware VirtualBox to create your your image, so it was really really important for the European, Europe, European Commission to not have this vendor locking, and so they they are using uh, tools like Packer and Salt to create to pack the okay. Sorry. To pack the application. Uh, better ideas. So as you can see, uh, it's uh, very easy to to use if you are already using provisioning tools like uh, Chef, Puppet, and so on. You can combine them to to your packing system, and using uh, using this, you won't need to uh, to provision your servers when they start. You already have an image. You can create new image on the fly, and uh, in integrate it, integrate them into your uh, your code. Um, so, the next step was not to only have the image, but to use this image to have the ephemeral environment. Uh, to do this, we decided to use uh, AWS at, at first. Uh, right now, uh, we, we are using, uh, we, st we are starting to use Azure as well. Non not all the environments are on uh, AWS, so we can uh, easily switch from one to other, uh, depending on the needs and uh, on the cost and so on. Uh, so the, it's a coded infrastructure. Uh, and the most important is, yeah, we defined the, the infrastructure as a dependency, so you can manage the version of your in infrastructure as easily as you manage the version of your modules and so on using Composer. And as you can see, uh, on a new deployment, we can, Create a new infrastructure in only four minutes, so it's very it's very short, and you pay only per use. So it's you can have a, a lot of new envir environment in a few minutes. Um, after that, we decided to use a deployment platform to. Not a uh, continuous deployment platform to orchestrate all these tools. Uh, to do this, we decided to use, they decided to use uh, continuous PHP. Why? Because there are no vendor locking. It's not a worker limited model. Uh, and it's possible to, to run tests in parallel. And there, the, it's uh, focused on PHP not uh, 
on any language. It supports all, all other language too, but it focused on PHP. And it, it simplifies the, the delivery workflow because it proposed uh, a workflow just uh, at start. Uh, here is the a way you can uh, we can uh, manage our workflows. So after that, as there are many websites, many subsites, and the number of uh, subsites are increasing, so we decided to create a skeleton. Thanks to to Git to GitHub, it's just a fork of. Uh, of this select in skeleton to create a new a new subsite and every time this uh, skeleton is updated the subsite can uh, have and can benefit from the change uh, thanks to pull request so uh, it's a common starting point for all websites and the you, all the tools we I presented before are included in the in this uh, in this skeleton. And everything is documented, so a new developer can start in uh, less than, uh, than two hours, a uh, completely new project with all the tools uh, needed to manage the, the quality assurance. After that, yes, it's not because you have a tool set that you know how to, to use them together. So we designed we, we decided to select uh, a good practice uh, to manage these workflows, to these processes. There are not so much practices. Uh, you can have the continuous integration. Maybe everybody knows about it. Uh, if not, almost everybody is using it, maybe without knowing about. Uh, so every single branch is when it's merging the, in a developer branch, and this developer branch is tested. So uh, it was the start. We we started with it with that. So every test was in, was put in the in this step, and after that we moved to continuous delivery. So in continuous delivery, you have everything you have in the continuous integration, plus you have a package. This package is very helpful for deploying. You can deploy this, pa this package on any kind of environment, and this package should have been tested before. And if you are using, if you are using a Scrum project, project management, it's very useful because at the end of the sprint, you have a package to deliver to your, to your customer, to the product owner in just here. So after that, the, the next step is continuous deployment. Continuous deployment, it's almost the same, except there is no manual uh, deployment to, to production. Everything is automated. So any new feature is deployed when it's ready. It's the, the best approach if you want to, to, de to deliver more business value uh, quickly to, you, to your users. And in this case, you are using a, cal a Kanban uh, approach, not anymore a, a Scrum approach. So a little comparison, it continues. In you have uh, the agile de development. It's what was made before. So only code it and build, and uh, in the end of the sprint, we manually deployed without any test. After that, continuous integration, the same way, except every single, every single push is tested. Not released, but tested. With the continuous delivery, the same thing, but a package is done, and once the package is done, it could be automatically deployed on a new environment to test it, and 
manually you could uh, you could deploy and uh, check if everything is good in production too. And for the continuous the continuous deployment, it's the same except there is no any more manual interaction. You push if all the tests are okay, it deploy. It's what we we did, but not for everything, because yeah. We cannot start to to deploy in uh, in production every single uh, new features. So to do this, we we started with only the, the odd fix. So it's the branching model, the the most successful Git branching model. Uh, so every tag is on production. The master branch is the pre-production. The develop branch. Is the, the the integration uh, testing? So every new feature is as its own branch. Once a feature is finished, it's merged in develop in the develop branch, and in the end, we can have a, a release branch once at the end of the sprint. And if it's uh, accepted by the product owner, it's deployed. But a uh, hotfix could occur anywhere. And the the hotfix is deployed in production using continuous deployment in this case. So <clears throat> the next step was to have this ephemeral environment. So using the 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 pipelines, the deployment pipelines, we defined some use case. Uh, the production, as I said, was deployed, is deployed from the, the tags. The pre-production is deployed from the master, but any hotfix, any features, any release could have a, an ephemeral environment using all the tools we, we saw. Uh, so these ephemeral environments could be destroyed automatically every day, every day at night, every night. And uh, in fact, once it's more important, what is more important is we won't deploy the branch. We will deploy only the, the pull request. So in this case, we, we won't test, we won't automatically test only the, the feature branch but we will test the merge of the feature branch and the develop branch. And we, we will deploy the merge of the feature branch and the, the develop branch on this specific ephemeral environment. So we can have uh, all the, the new features included in the specific feature, uh, features we are testing. So if there is a, a regression after the merge, we can prevent it. So, in the end, what is the achievement in only one year? Because it started one year ago. Uh, we drastically decreased the time to market. Now we can deploy a new version of the application uh, with an average of four deploy a day compared to four deploy a year. We have multiple releases per day and we decreased the, the bottlenecks. Uh, as I said, the, the QA team was using the, was testing any single change. No, in an average of 80% of the, the change are, pre, pre, are blocked by the CI platform. So the, the bottleneck has decreased a lot they almost have nothing, no, not, they are doing their job and they can test more and more feature, but, re, but ready feature, not, uh, not in progress feature. So if there, if there are coding rules uh, not, uh, not respected, uh, they can, uh, they add they on to, they have to, to check the, this coding, this uh, coding style, and, and so on. It's uh, it's blocked before it arrived to to them. Um, 
also using GitHub, they, they can have an online code encoding review. They, are, they don't have to, to clone the project, to check out the branch, they can do this online. Uh, the coverage, the test coverage is, has increased a lot also. So the, the assurance of the quality is very higher than before. Uh, and once is very important for them, it's any single contractors can start and run the website locally with the same configuration than in production very easily without adding a lot of tools uh, on their computers. And if there is any, any problem, it's uh, directly included in their, it's directly uh, alert, alert it in the Slack community, in the um, uh, Slack channel and so on. So it's uh, really important for them. And they, they earned a lot of time and uh, they can uh, release a lot of new features compared to previous. So, yes, is there any question? And thank you for your time. Yeah. These tools are not are maybe not common for the Drupal community, but they are common for the PHP community. Okay. Like Composer is very and yes, but Packer is uh, is written by the same team as uh, Vagrant is the is from Ashicorp, and yes, it's not uh, focused for PHP. It's focused for the infrastructure. So maybe it will become more and more used for PHP developers in the, in the future years. Other question? No? Yeah. It's on the cloud. It's on the cloud. Okay. So every ephemeral environment is on the cloud. So uh, once you, once a developer push, uh, uh, create a new pull request, uh, we are able to create uh, the the CI platform automatically will uh, trigger the uh, the stack creation and. Uh, deploy the, the new version on this specific environment. And at night, it will uh, destroy the, the stack for saving money. We are, use, we are not using production, da, uh, production database uh, in, the, in the tests. We are using a, a subset of the database, but not the entire production database. So uh, using a migration, uh, Drupal Migrate, we are migrating the, the schema, we inject the, the testing data, and we execute the data. Because if you are using the production da database, when you create new features, the, the, da the data for your specific feature is not yet in production. So you have to create the, the fixture to, to test your tests, uh, to, to test your feature. And also, using production database is uh, very loud because of the size of the of the database, and the only thing you need is specific use case, not all the the database. But on 
uh, ephemeral environment, what is possible is to use a snapshot of the production, that, of uh, not the production database, but uh, the pre-production database, a, san a sanitized one. And in this case, you can make uh, additional uh, stress test and so on. Yes? Yeah. The pre-production. So the pre-production is uh, contain only the, the master branch. So before deploying the new tax, uh, the the master branch is uh, always maintained with the sanitized version of the database, and uh, any product owner can test something in this environment, in this specific environment. Other question? Yeah? Sorry, I don't hear. In, uh, maybe you can go to the micro. I don't know. Hello? Yes. All right. So let's say you have four different repositories yeah. and you commit to each of them and uh, your demo is going to rely on uh, changes to all of those. How do you test that? Like combine them all together and then make the demo. Uh, to combine all the, no, 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 we, we don't deploy uh, all the repositories, the repositories at once. It's all, uh, we, we have the platform, so the, the distribution, we can deploy only the platform, or we can deploy each single uh, subsite, uh, subsite at once. And we can test each subsite at once because uh, once we deploy on the ephemeral environment, we include the, the last version of the platform and deploy both of them, the, the platform and the, and the subsite. Any other question? No? Okay, thanks, uh, thanks a lot for your time. And uh, have a great DrupalCon.